Welcome to our lecture online. In this example, again, we need to use the what we call completion of the square method. And when we're dealing with ellipses, it's a little bit more complicated than dealing with circles. So this is a technique we need to use. First of all, we're going to rewrite this just a little bit. What we're going to do is we're going to use some brackets and write this as 9x squared minus 54x and then leave some space plus 4y squared plus 8y and again leave some space equals minus 49 because we want to move the 49 over to the other side. Now before we complete the square we should factor out something if we can. In this case we can. We can write this as 9 times x squared minus 6 times 9 is 54 that's 6x and then leave some space right there plus here we can factor out a 4 4 times y squared plus 2y and leave some space equals minus 49 and now we can go ahead and complete the square to do that we take half the middle term square it and add it here and of course if we add it here we must add it there as well and we need to do it for both x and y but let's do it on the side so we see how that's done so here we take the middle term minus 6 divided by 2 and we square that which is equal to minus 3 squared which is equal to 9 so that means we're going to have to add a 9 there and I think I'm missing some parentheses ain't that so I need some parentheses here some parentheses there right there that's better looks better for the other one we take the number 2 divide by 2 and we square it which is equal to 1 squared which is equal to 1 so that means we need to add a 9 here plus 9 and we need to add a plus 1 there but of course if we do that to the left side equation we must do it to the right side equation but notice that this 9 is multiplied by this 9 so essentially what we do here is we add plus 9 times 9 and plus 4 times 1 4 times 1 like that okay so now we can go ahead and factor that so let me write my black pen here so this can be written as 9 times x minus 3 quantity squared plus 4 times y plus 1 quantity squared is equal to minus 49 plus 81 plus 4. See, that's 85 minus 49, that's 50, that's 36. All right, so this can be written. Let me come over here and continue on this side. So this is 9 times x minus 3 quantity squared plus 4 times y plus 1 quantity squared, which is equal to, when you add all that up, you get 36. So next, what we need to do is we need to divide both sides by 36 because essentially we want a 1 there. So we get 9 times x minus 3 squared over 36 plus 4 times y minus 1 squared over 36 is equal to 1. And then we bring these two numbers and bring them down here. So this could be written as x minus 3 squared divided by 36 divided by 9 plus y minus 1 squared divided by 36 divided by 4 is equal to 1. You may wonder, well, how can I do that? Well, let me show you. In reverse, if I divide by a fraction, that's the same as multiplying by its inverse, so the 9 would go back to the top. So you can see that's clearly the same thing. And simplifying this, we get the following. So this can be written as x minus 3 squared over 36 divided by 9, which is 4 plus y minus 1 squared divided by 9 equals 1. Now we have to do one more step. That's still not quite the final form. This can be written as x minus 3 squared divided by 2 squared plus y minus 1 squared. Oh, wait a minute. I went from plus to minus. That's terrible. This should be a plus. Got to be very careful. In algebra, it's easy to make mistakes. There we go. And that's equal to 1. Okay. Now it is correct. So I simply forgot to keep carrying the plus. I went from plus to minus for no reason other than not paying attention. 
All right, now we're ready to graph this. First of all, the offset from the origin, we, write, we go to the right three units and down one unit. So one, two, three, down one. So this here is the central point of the ellipse at three, negative one. In the x direction, we're going to move to the right and to the left two units. So to the right, one, two, to the left, one, two. And in the y direction, we're going to move up and down three units. So one, two, three, and one, two, three. And so now when we connect those outside dots, we have a nice ellipse that looks like this. And there you go. That's how you graph that original equation. Now notice, when we have it in this form, there's no way you can go from here directly to the graph. You first have to recognize that you have two, two terms with an x in it and two terms with a y in it, and then you need to complete the square. Before you do it, you need to factor out the coefficient in front of the x square and factor out the coefficient in front of the y square. Then you complete the square by taking half the middle term and squaring it, half the middle term and squaring it, of course, when you add up the left side, you have to add it to the right side. And don't forget that this is multiplied times 9, and this is multiplied times 4. Then you collect common terms after you factor. You can see that this turns into x minus 3 squared, this turns into y plus 1 squared. Then, after you combine the other, the right side, you can then see you divide everything by 36 to turn this into a 1. Bring this down and bring this down, simplify, and write it as the number squared in the denominator. Finally, once you have it in this form, you find the central point of the ellipse by using the offset, and, ooh, another mistake. This is 3 squared, and then you move to the right, left, uh, to the right and left, 2 units, up and down, 3 units, to find the, the other 4 points on the ellipse, connect the dots, and you have yourself an ellipse. And notice how easy it is in algebra to make mistakes. I made one over here by not carrying the plus, and I made one here by not turning 9 into a 3 squared. So not paying attention in algebra can be very costly. And there's a couple examples of what to be careful for. So that is how it's done. <laughs> Lucky. Lucky that I caught them, huh? Yes. Got to be careful every step of the way.